Hello, everybody. This is Tim Heaney from Rotowire. Welcome to the Wire to Wire Fantasy Baseball Chat. Uh, hopefully, coming to you every Wednesday on YouTube. Uh, maybe 1 p.m. Eastern, maybe some other time you guys want to decide on. Definitely looking for some input on when the best time to have these chats uh, will be during the baseball season. Hoping to kind of catch everybody that wants to watch it on a lunch break or something, just hanging out at home, whatever you're doing. Want to kind of get a little bit of market research from you guys about what time would be best to have these. Because I want to have these once a week at least, um, if not kind of going into the breaking news aspect of things here. Um, so I know it's early in the year. It's April 11th. You know, it's hard to get so many concrete readings from what we've seen so far in this really, really young baseball season. But I think at this point we can kind of get enough of a hint of what people can do on the fields that we might be able to get at least a little bit of a read on, you know, their potential for the season. Um, if they've had some positive changes, if they had some negative things that are affecting them. I want to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, I got a lot of DL placements from recent past to go over a flurry of players that are going to be owned in a lot of leagues that just kind of hit the disabled distance last night. A little bit of worse news for some of the other guys that we have been on the disabled list for a little bit. And uh, I want to get into, like, you know, like I said before, we can't read so much from the tea leaves at this point that it's, you know, it's only what been, you know, about two weeks uh, since the season's been live, but definitely want to check, you know, check out some of the early indicators for, for some players this year on, on the good side and the bad side uh, to kind of weigh what we're looking at. So I, I guess let me jump into the news right away. Uh, actually, we, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing uh, over on rotowire.com at this point. I am with Derek Van Riper on the Tuesday Fantasy Baseball podcast that gets dropped, you know, a little bit early afternoonish Eastern time. Most of the time we kind of switch our recording time to a little bit later because we want to, you know, schedule things a little bit differently. So, you know, maybe around four o'clock, five o'clock Eastern time, those will be typically dropping on a Tuesday. Get to talk about a little bit more things during that time too. A little more news to break before we go on air. So topics are always good to be fed. Uh, for Major League Baseball here. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at Tim underscore Heaney. You can catch us at Rotowire. Uh, and we have at Rotowire uh, MLB, all one word. Kind of gives you the news feed, the raw news feed of what's going on. No, you know, just, just kind of the news notes uh, facet of things if you don't want to deal with all the, the bells and whistles that we have to offer everywhere else. So, you know, follow those three accounts. You can get us on Facebook as well. You know, catch some of our big content over there we'll do some live streams there probably as well coming up if you know you're into the baseball stuff also football stuff if you interested in the nfl draft that's coming up in the next couple of weeks we'll have some content left on that uh yeah so you know let's get some of the baseball news here uh one that just kind of broke a little bit before i came on air uh Man manuel margot for the padres uh place on the 10-day disabled list uh bruised ribs uh, he suffered them Tuesday night against the Rockies. Was hit by a pitch from Scott Oberg. X-ray didn't reveal a fracture, but he's going to need a little bit of a break. You know, ribs are a tricky thing to heal. They don't necessarily heal all the way, even if you're months behind or at least m months after they've been injured. It takes a little while to kind of, you know, get back into place there. It's called a deep bruise right now. He's not going to play for several days, it looks like here. And, you know, with, with, the, with the DL placement guarantees it. Um, first date of eligibility to return is April 21st. Um, maybe the biggest story for Rotowire, uh, a lot of supporters of Franchi Cordero. He's been called up to replace him. If Cordero has been dropped in your league, he'd be a nice pickup to go with. There. There's a little bit of speed to his game, you know, stolen base potential. It's always difficult to come by in this era of baseball. Um, the outfield arrangement has been kind of weird for the Padres this year with Will Myers injury. Uh, and now Margot, it's kind of up for grabs. But, you know, you got, you got Cordero jumping into the, I would be very happy to get him because he's a left-handed batter and a lot of the other guys are righties. So, um, he has that advantage for platoon situations there now that he's healthy, you know, Jose Perella, um, and then you have Hunter Renfro there. Corey Spangenberg probably has a little bit of outfield in him too. He's a left-handed hitter as well. So that kind of favors him a bit as well. Bit of a, a fluid picture there for the Padres that I've mentioned in the past with Will Myers' injury there. So uh, Cordero's a one-hour chase for the reason I just mentioned before. Uh, Perella's probably second. 
uh, Renfro's third, actually Spangenberg's third, depending on what he is at third base, and fourth is Renfro, who's kind of a singular player with power, mostly doing that against left-handers. So, you know, if you have Cordero on your watch list, time to time to grab him before someone else gets to him. He'll probably be a popular guy to add this weekend. You know, worth a good chunk of your budget. You know, if you have a thousand dollar cap, I'd probably go maybe forty or fifty on him, uh, just because there is a speed potential there, and his. You know, he had a really good spring, so that's a good sign of things to come, I think, there. Decent contact, a little bit of power there, just kind of maybe does a little bit a little bit across the board to make him a really, you know, uh, valuable asset in a lot of deep leagues this year, at least, that can pay off. Um, checking back with, with Will Myers, I mentioned before, uh, it looks like he's going to be out longer than expected. There was initial uh, hope that he might be back uh, this Friday. That's not going to happen. I think that they want to take the time with that, uh, the, the nerve irritation that kind of happened with his arm. Made it, you know, difficult to throw to the infield. Um, you know, that, that's one thing we might have underestimated with Myers. You know, guy going from first base to the outfield. Sometimes, you know, a little more strain you put on your arm because you're making more of those, you know, those long throws. Even though Myers used to be an outfielder, they moved him to first base to keep him healthier and to kind of maximize his skill set that way. You know, making that switch back, you know, it does take a little bit of a toll on your body. Um, so they probably want to give him a little bit more time off that way. I would expect him back sometime next week. Uh, we'll update you if that changes in any way, but uh, you know it, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a bummer. But you have through the weekend at least to hold on to him and maybe not make a transaction right away. Maybe not activate him until next week starts before those weekly weekly lineups are due. So, uh, so that's something that you, know, you want to look out for. That Padres outfield has another bit of a, a weirdness to it now. Uh, all right. So now we have Johnny Cueto uh, is also was placed on the disabled list with an ankle sprain. Uh, you know that I mentioned this, I believe last week that uh, Cueto, you know, guy who has a weird delivery a little bit, you know, that ankle kind of gets turned in certain ways during it probably. So um, yeah, it, it's a case where that you, you want to get that right because he relies so much on deception with that ankle. Um Actually, I actually haven't noticed if it was listed as which ankle it was, but um, it looks like, uh, yeah, the specifics of the ankle weren't revealed on our website, sadly. But either way, <clears throat> it, it's not something good for a pitcher's delivery when you have something like that wrong with your ankle. So look at him rest it up. Uh, uh, looks like Suarez, Andrew Suarez will be the call up. Uh, they place quit on the DL. Suarez will be replacing him in the rotation. No real interest there except for maybe Anil only. Uh, Chris Stratton and Ty Block are the, the current aces of this rotation right now with Bumgarner, Cueto, and Samarcha all injured. Uh, speaking of Bumgarner, he was shifted to the 60-day disabled list. It's, you know, it's a bummer that, you know, the, the hope that Bumgarner would return sooner than that is erased, but it was always going to be a conservative timetable with the broken pinky on his throwing hands. Uh, still going to be, you know, they still want to get that right, you know, have him his, so his grip isn't that affected by it. So May 25th is the earliest he can return. Uh, you know, it's a lot of time to, to fill in in the meantime for a guy that you probably drafted as your ace this year, like I did in two leagues. So you're going to have to kind of plug and play. Maybe, maybe you do want to offer that trade to somebody who's has a struggling starting pitcher going with them. Maybe you can buy a little bit low on a rebound there. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe some March will come back before then that could help things if you have both of them. Um, so yeah, the giants rotation looks really weird right now. And, but even though Ty block's been kind of pitching, okay, and here and there, I'm still kind of wary about those skills because he doesn't check out many guys most of the time. So it's a bit of a mess in that rotation. I'm not really looking forward to, or looking to, um, acquire any of those guys that he kind of, that kind of are going to be filling in for the mixed leagues probably should go somewhere else when you look for that sort of thing. Uh, Rognan or door of the Rangers has a also on the 10 day disabled list with a strained hamstring, strained left hamstring. Um, yeah, it's probably just going to be a little bit of a, a brief absence there. Uh, hamstrings can linger, but this one doesn't seem to be that concerning. Uh, April 20th is the early seeking return because he, he left uh, Monday's action. Uh, Jerickson profile looks like he's going to, st he started at second base last night. Probably going to see most of the opportunities there. Kind of crazy he gets thrown back into uh, a fantasy spot so demanding as second base. Kind of the, one of the guys that are looking to kind of uh, keep him healthy by putting him at outfield or or at DH here. But second base, you know, he was 
he was starting out as a shortstop and then kind of moved to second base, jumped around depending on what his health and the Rangers availability of people look like. So this might get, get pro far some eligibility in some leagues that might be sneaky down the road. If he, if he happens to get five starts at second base in this time, that could pay off. Uh, if Profar kind of shows that bat that he's teased us with in the past in short sample sizes. So anything to get Profar extra qualification in any fantasy league is a good sign for that. Uh, Odor, you'll probably just have to kind of, you know, wait it out a little bit. So uh, very, you know, good, a, a sneaky uh, development for Profar in AL only leagues where he might be a lot more valuable if he does play three days a week for the entirety of the season there. Um, so it's, you know, reminding us that Profar – once a good prospect might have a little bit more of a road to playing time right now, maybe in a deep league, he'd be one of those guys you could try probably just throw a buck on and fab and kind of see where it goes from there. While he has this opportunity, um, Adam Eaton, uh, was kind of teasing a D Elston. He kind of came back, but then he was, uh, he's been unable to shake off the lingering bone bruise in his left ankle that he sustained. I believe it was last week, Thursday. Yes. Against the Mets. He played through Saturday and Sunday and, kind of was developed into something that he didn't want to play through. So uh, Brian Goodwin and Howie Kendrick would probably be splitting most of the work there. Probably have Wilmer Defoe at most of the time at second base. Kendrick was kind of sharing there. Now Kendrick will probably plug in as well. Uh, with that setup, maybe he'll face lefties and Goodwin will face righties, which makes Goodwin the favorite option for that short-term um, that short-term boost there. Uh, Eden was having a nice little start to the year. Two home runs, uh, five RBI, 345, 424, 655 slugging percentage in the, the small sample size of 33 play appearances. But, you know, he was kind of uh, hearkening back to what was excited about him last year before he got he, before he tore that ACL uh, in his knee. So you still want to value Eaton as the type of guy that can deliver across five categories. And, and hitting leadoff for, for this team, you know, 90-plus runs guaranteed over a full season, you, you – you, you, you extrapolate or, you know, I guess uh, derate that over less than the full season, but it's still very good uh, runs potential there. I was kind of lucky to pass at him in a few leagues, uh, you know, hoping that he comes back from this injury prone, but really tantalizing skill set here. So hopefully that works out for the better for him. Uh, so got to All right. So Adam Eaton being the last injury guy here. Okay. So, if you want to check out any more other news items here, go to rotowire.com and then you can go slash baseball slash latest news HTM. That's where we'll you know be posting our all of our you know news updates there. Uh, all right, so I think we're, we're clear to move on to some things I want to talk about. Some of the early leaders, um, early surprises, early leaders, surprises, good and bad, I guess, so to speak. So, uh, you, know, you got Ho Bryce Harper atop the homer list with six uh, big blasts. You know, it's nice to see that he's, you know, getting this power in like he was last year before he got injured running the bases. Uh, you know, when Harper's healthy, he might be the number one player in baseball, even above Mike Trout. Uh, you know, the, the on-base skills are just probably, you know, Joey Votto and Bryce Harper are probably tier one in OVP. Uh, the fact that Harper is 16 walks and five strikeouts, uh, it's pretty epic at this point of the year. Pace will calm down, but he still, you know, still belongs along atop top that leaderboard. He's not surprising to be there. Uh, you know, Charlie Blackman second with four homer, four homers, tied with a lot of people for four homers, actually, including Mike Trout and Brian Dozier, guy I was kind of singing his praises last week. Matt Davidson still top tied with four homers, calmed down drastically since his big opening day, to be expected, and the batting average being there, you know, twelve strikeouts already this year, but. The power is still, still there for Davidson. That's something you want to still buy into over the course of the season. If he gets a full-time role, anything close to that, 25-plus homers for sure. Uh, Eric Thames for the Brewers has been you know, kept in the lineup a little bit more recently because Christian Yelich, Lorenzo Cain, uh, all hurt, both hurt, so that's a big deal there for, for his playing time early, so something good to be said there. A lot of people tie for three home runs, including Ozzie Albies, which is one probably not a lot of people suspected. So, you know, that... Brace Park is good for lefty bats for power. Kind of helps Albies in that department there. He's a little bit better as a, as a lefty hitter. Uh, Tim Anderson of the White Sox, another surprise White Sox hitter, probably has a bit more longevity for the full length of the season than Tim Anderson. Uh, sorry, than, than Matt Davidson because he can add a stolen basis to that profile. Take a lot more wa the, his walk rates. You know, lapping his old 
old minuscule percentages there. Uh, you know, he had a lot of things going on from last year. He had his friend passed away before the season started. That's a, uh, you know, you don't want to talk, you don't want to put too much weight on external forces and stuff like this, but I think that weighed on his mind a little bit. I would speculate that it did. Um, not to say you ever move on from anything like that, but you know, maybe he found his right peace of mind with everything that happened. He kind of is in a little bit different mindset this year. He looks like he's more focused on baseball. So uh, for fantasy purposes, for our callous, emotionless fantasy purposes that we need to look at it, it's a positive development for him. And, you know, people were probably, the market was probably too heavy on him last year for the flaws in his game as well. Strikeout heavy, you know, low walk type of approach there. Probably chased it a little too aggressively. And I'll raise my hand to take blame for that as well. But there's a lot to like about the power speed combo here. Six stolen bases already this year. I believe that league leads the league. Yeah, I would have to think. Um, so, you know, 2020 type of player looking at this, even if he slows down, you know, it, it's a big profit if you kind of invested really lightly on him there. You know, Matt Chapman, a guy that Derek Van Riper wrote about in the MLB Barometer over at rotowire.com yesterday. Um, we talked about that on the podcast as well on Tuesday. Matt Chapman, you know, it's kind of a stack cast darling. He hits the ball hard, good power. Uh, definitely a three true outcomes type of player. Walk strikeouts, homers. So if, uh, you know, value him as as the, as you will in that one. OBP leagues is a better buy, I think, than, than the batting average one. But I still like his potential to have a nice little role as a run producer for the A's this year. And his his defense is among the best at third base in the majors. So that's going to keep him in the lineup most days. Really like really like the type of player when your defense supplements your power like that, even with your flaws with batting average. Uh. Even with the strikeouts, he'll hit, he's going to keep hitting the ball hard. You know, one of those guys that barrel rate probably is a is a persistent skill with him. So I like where that's going. You know, Matt Chapman's a good investment for those for your weighted third base type of strategy heading into the year. Uh, Shinsu Chu looks healthy now. He's got three homers as well. Um, you know, he's getting the top side of the platoon at bats at least, and I think trying to be a DH as much as possible is helping him there. Uh, you know, Paul DeYoung's keeping up his power. The power was the one that was going to stay with him. It's kind of what he's developed throughout his minor league career. Uh, I don't know if I trust every every other number with him, every other fantasy stat, but 20-plus homers from a, um, a second baseman shortstop eligible type of guy. That's going to be valuable in a lot of formats either way. Joey Gallo, three home runs. Didi Gregorius had three. Uh, two, two, two homers and eight RBIs in one game and not much else since. So, you know, take, take with that what you will. Shohei Otani doing his two-way thing. Um, you know, the offense is playing a lot stronger than most people thought with him. Uh, you know, it, his, his swing is, you won't, you wouldn't think it had so much power because it's kind of that Japanese style of, you know, pulling out while you're in the batter's box, you know, a little bit of, you know, you're taking the bat away from the zone a little bit there, maybe meant for contact more than power, but you know, this guy that, that, that power might play up a lot more than we expected as a DH, and he's outfield el- he's outfield eligible in a lot of leagues now, so that's a it's a big deal. He got scooped up for a lot of uh, fab money this weekend. A lot of leagues I'm in. I don't know if I would have paid that much. It's you know, like two hundred dollars he went for in one league. I'm not sure if I would have done that, but you know, th- there's a lot more to like about his position as a quasi DH now, you know, playing at least two or three times a week at offense. That could that could help uh, his fancy value overall. Uh, Gregory Polanco also has three round trippers. A guy. I regret not getting a share of this year. Uh, he's always kind of had that power speed combo as well. He's, he's fought through a lot of injuries and inconsistency is, you know, he's kind of a tall lanky guy who hasn't really, he didn't really find his swing uh, for most of his career. This might be the year that all puts together a little bit. He's got a, the spot in the run producing spot in the order there. So that's good for the pirates, even though that, that lineup was kind of underrated heading into the year, but a Polanco, Josh Bell, Starling Marte core, might be pretty good, and, and Colin Moran has a little bit of intrigue to him now because he's getting a little bit, you know, something close to full time work, at least the full time top side of, of a platoon. He's getting sustained at bats that way. So, you know, these guys, uh, this lineup might be deeper than most expected. I didn't even mention Corey Dickerson, who's always a serviceable piece, if not a one that kind of puts you over the top. Uh, that that Pirates lineup might be trickily good this year. <laughs> it might not be that the, along the line of the Royals or the Rays in terms of you know, easy stream matchup to go with there. Uh, Miguel Sano, three home runs, not surprising. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton with his three home runs, even with his 22 strikeouts to begin the year, he still had three homers, including two in the same game on opening day and once on the Yankees home opener. You know, as a Yankees fan, I'll, I'll kind of speak to some firsthand experience here with the press here. 
know, people booing Stanton with the strikeouts. You knew what you were getting with him. If you didn't know what you were getting with him, you should have done your research. High strikeout guy with, with the power and the walks. Another another three true outcomes guy. If he gets hot, he's going to lead the league in home runs. So he, he, in fact, did last year. And that's why you got him. So, you know, in the first couple of weeks, there's going to be an adjustment, especially changing leagues, seeing new pitchers in new ballparks. The guy probably doesn't like playing much in the cold. The Marlins did have an indoor stadium. Um, so retractable roof stadium either way. Uh, so Stanton probably has to get used to a bunch of those things here, uh, playing your home games uh, in, in colder weather like that. So uh, <laughs> if someone's panicking, I'm buying low right now. I don't recommend anybody panic right now, but if you're if the guy in your league is really just really having a, um, a freak out over this, I would take advantage of that. Uh, Christian Villanueva of the Padres, another surprise three homer type of guy here. All of that came in one game as well. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. 12 strikeouts, no walks, it looks like. He was one of those um, mid-range Cubs prospects a couple of years ago that kind of flamed out a little bit. Padres kind of scooped him up, see what they have. Um, it's worth seeing what he could give you in like an NL only or a deep mix league if you're really having trouble with the corner infield spots. They're probably going to have a lot of rotation there, as I said before, with the outfield. They'll have Chase Headley still kind of getting at-bats there. And, you know, Carlos Oswahe at second base might push Corey Spangemer over the third base a lot of the time. But... You know, if, if he didn't spend much on him in fab, it's a good way to kind of give him a test run for a week or two, see what happens. I don't want to say cut him in deeper leagues, but, you know, definitely just, just get a test of what he can do because there's a little bit of power here. You know, those post-high prospects sometimes sometimes figure things out. And if he gets sustained at bats with the Padres, who really don't have much else to, to play for, except for maybe trying out some of these younger guys, that could kind of play in his direction there. So I would be kind of worth digging into a little bit there uh, in that sense. Uh, okay, you got some. So a lot of guys tied for two, so I'm probably not going to go in any of that here. Uh, all right. So let's see. Let's go some of the pitching leaders here. And I'm going to talk about two guys that I'm sure probably a lot of people are going to want to know about here. Uh, all right, Patrick Corbin actually leads the league in strikeouts right now at 29 over his three starts. Another guy I was kind of regretting not getting a piece of, but his price kept climbing and the reward wasn't there, but uh, you know, Patrick Corbin figured things out in the second half last year. That slider really came back as a weapon for him. So I'm very, very pleased with what I've seen so far. Uh, I think he's faced the Dodgers twice and, and mowed them down. So, you know, Corbin leads the league with 29 strikeouts, 27 for Kluber Scherzer, Dylan Bundy has 25 as well among his three. I was a bit of a skeptic on him because I think he wore down a little bit last year, but he's doing a lot of things right right now. And uh, you know, a guy that, of course, it's good for keeper leagues that I would, would not have uh, ragged on you for, for for going with here as a long-term investment. I'm kind of surprised doing this on the outset here. I'm going to check on some of the things he's been doing while we're waiting here. Uh, let's see. All right. I mean, Bundy was a guy that I got for a dollar in Tout Wars last year, the, the big expert league. Did well, but then he kind of faded down the stretch and kind of regretted that a little bit. Yeah, he's uh, he's. I mean, his peripherals kind of match what he's doing right now. It's as uh, something pretty uh, worth watching. Uh, infield fly balls twenty three point five percent. That's a big. That's a big number I like to look at when I'm looking at pitcher success or failure. Um, the higher that number, the the more I like to see because infield fly balls is just as good as a strikeout. It's basically an easy out, so it's a very good way to look at which guys are getting being deceptive and getting that. Uh, Seventeen point one swinging strike rate. That's amazing. Uh, 62.3% first strike rate. It's always good to get ahead of the count 0-1 as a pitcher. That's something I like to look for in, in, in as, a, as a development here. Um, and he's – it's not the best rate in the world, but it's still good for what he's working with here. Uh, his velocity looks about the same as it was last year. Not really anything just changing there. I think the big change that I'm noticing and that pitch info on fan graphs kind of denotes here – yeah, his sinkers become a part of his arsenal again. Sinker slash two seamer classification of those pitches can really vary depending on the angle that they're caught at in the you know the the um, the in stadium readers or and whatever uh, the pitch FX systems and pitch info system. Uh, the sinker is going to be, I think, one that expands his his uh, arsenal a little bit better. Uh, you know, last year the, the big one was the slider. It's nice to see him move away from throwing or at least have a complement to the slider so he doesn't rely on it so often. 
Um, you know, having a fourth or in his case, fifth pitch, very good to, to, to really just expand how he can attack hitters. And that's one development that I'm really encouraged by as I'm looking at it here. So, you know, maybe this is the true breakout for Bunny to get that, that sinker going. Um, maybe, you know, as it says, uh, you know, a couple of his starts came on extra rest, I believe this year. So maybe that's what's helping him, uh, really kind of keep fresh there. So, Dylan Bunny, the, the, the needle's pointing up for him, I think, uh, at this point. Do I want to sell him in a shallower league? Probably, because it looks like he might be a little bit too good. But in those deeper leagues, you're going to like what you're getting out of him, even if he does kind of regress. So I would, you know, in those te- in those mixed leagues where you can go like 10 or 12 teams, when you play in those that you can kind of churn pitching a little bit easier, maybe that's where you can trade Bundy or something better. Um, so maybe that's – you can hang, hang on in deeper leagues to Bundy. Uh but you can flip them for a little bit in other shallow leagues because the replacement value is a little bit better. Uh, all right. Cole Hamels has 23 strikeouts, but he also has a 506 ERA. Guy I really wasn't high on this year. Jay Happ, um, 23 strikeouts in his 16 innings and three starts. I'd rather buy into Happ than Hamels because Happ's kind of had that that nice success recently with his sinker. Uh, back when Ray Sears and the Pirates kind of fixed him a little bit, I think there's a little bit of reality to what he can do over the course of a full season. Uh, Chris Sale, Justin Verlander, also 23 strikeouts there. Uh, Chris Archer, that ERA is ugly uh, with 22 strikeouts, but he's faced the Yankees and the Red Sox, I believe, if not the Red Sox twice. So that's a big deal there. Uh, Garrett Cole, uh, 22 strikeouts as well. Sparkling start for him. Joining that Astros rotation is just, oh my goodness. It's, it's a deep, deep starting pitching staff. You know, that's the kind of team where you, they'll fix what's wrong with Garrett Cole. Um, they will work the corners well as pitch framers. Um, Brian McCann's a good one at that. Even Evan Gaddis is serviceable there. You know, Max Dazzy, depending on how he does, could be good at that as well. Uh, Cole just looks looks healthy, looks fresh there. Uh, fly ball rate and his infield fly ball rate skyrocketing in this in this short period of time. The rates are going higher. Minute Maid Park was surprisingly one of the best, if not the best, uh, pitchers parks last year. In recent years, according to metrics as well. So that 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 reputation as a band box has to has to leave your mind here. You have to refocus on the fact that eighteen team park. Uh, sorry, Minute Maid Park. Jeez, excuse me, uh, wrong corporation there. Great place to pitch. Even with the DH, the Astros do have that setup where it's going to help a lot for starting pitchers there. Uh, Garrett Cole's velocity is 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 okay across the board, but if he's using so far, he's using that uh, that slider a bit more, and so that's really helping him. You know, Garrett Cole's one of those guys that you're not going to get him cheap that from now on. So if you missed out the boat, you're probably going to pay, pay pay the freight as the as the the other nautical shipping term also goes there as well. Um, okay, you got Garrett Richards here, 19 strikeouts but 12 walks. That's not surprising. He's got that high walk uh, approach there. I still want to buy the skills there a little bit because he's still got that strikeout uh, ability there and. If the Angels, you know, they'll keep him at a six-man rotation, it'll work out well for him. Uh, Mike Fultonavich, very much, you know, keeping up, revisiting some of the hype he had last year before it all went, a, went, a, went aside. He's made some changes to his delivery this year. I believe it's his wind-up with something different. Um, he's got that 18 strikeout to five walk ratio. That's a really good one to go. Of course, Sho- Shohei Otani, brilliant so far. John, John Gray is the one that's kind of a polarizing figure. I... I was not as aggressive on him as some others may be. So it might turn out to be great, but you know the, the fact that he has to clear that high bar of pitching at Coors Field as your home park, still not going to be great for him. Skills are good, but the results of his batted balls are not going to work out well. Uh, so, And I'll, I'll go to a couple of guys that have 17 and 16 strikeouts respectively. Blake Snell has three starts this year, 10 walks, another gun, one with a high walk rate. He had a 10 strikeout, five walk game uh, on Tuesday. I like the changes he made last year when he came back from the minors. He changed the positioning on the mound. Worked really well. You're going to get some of those um, those high walk games because if you know he's kind of picky with location a little bit, or maybe maybe less picky, just more so effectively wild with his location. Um, but I still like the strikeout upside there. If you can kind of blend him with someone who has a a better whip profile, that's a good mixture to have. Uh, Joey Lucchese. Uh, out of nowhere type of star right now in three starts, uh, 1.72 ERA, 16 strikeouts, four walks, 15 and two third innings. 
you know, he might be that surprise. People are trying to pick out the surprise starter for the Padres this year. Is there's usually one. Uh, this might be your guy. Uh, out of the gate, looks looks really effective. His his fastball is not really anything that you consider blowing someone away with. Um, kind of touches ninety two here and there, that sort of thing. You know, eighty nine to ninety two, ninety three is kind of the the widely accepted scouting report for him. Uh, the left hander works with a crazy delivery where he kind of does, you know, reach, reach down to the bottom, hides the baseball a little bit better. And then the 90, the 91 that might come with a fastball plays up like a 94 because you can't see it. So you're going to get, you know, that's another piece you have to kind of go on with velocity. Like where is it coming out of this hand? Where is it? Where's it being picked up by the hitter? Where's the arm angle? Where's the, the tunneling, I guess, so to speak with some of these things. Uh, he's really right as a two pitch pitcher so far. Fastball curve, it looks like. Uh, some 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 pick up some of his change ups there. Um, you know some of some of his work picks up his fastballs might pick up as um as change ups because of the way the way they're released and you know if they're less than I you know if they if they're a little bit down in velocity they might read his change ups but it looks like he's more of a two pitch pitcher here. So um, those deceptive guys like a Mike Fires or even like a Josh Coleman or over the top type of guy. This is kind of a little bit, you know, lower. Like a like a Kershaw, he has that real dip in his delivery, uh, but it's even lower than that. It's really just meant to be deception, so he can work with moderate stuff, as opposed to a Kershaw that works with amazing stuff. Um, I expect that to run on a little bit uh, of utility. His utility in the shallower mixed leagues is probably going to run out very soon, uh, so I don't expect it to be much of a of a big deal for those. But you know, and not only there's still a lot of uh, a lot of upside to play here because Petco Park being Petco Park that pitching paradise it is that could still come in useful for a guy that is also deceiving with, with his delivery. So I think that there's a little bit of uh, work at play here in, in NL only or those 15 team and higher mixed leagues that might play well there, but, you know, catching someone with this greatest start with a profile that's very volatile, not the best way to overinvest in fantasy. So be careful. If you can get him for a buck out of a hundred on fab, that's great. I doubt he goes to that small because someone will chase this production over a full season. So you don't want to really just kind of buy what's already in the bank and what's not going to come on your team statistics wise. So I think that kind of should be a, a big warning, even though there might be some injury for the long term here, that pace of play is probably not one I want to heavily invest in here. Uh, so I think I'm going to think I'm going to stop there today. Um, you know, if you if you guys want to, you know, let us know if what a good time is for everybody that's, that's watching this every week. We do want to kind of find out the right place to to answer the most questions, get the most viewer response to these things. I mean, I do like just talking at the camera. I do like just you know hearing the sound of my own voice, like most ego maniacal uh, video people on YouTube. But uh, you know, I want to do a service to everybody here. I want to I want to you know have a little bit more of an interchange with questions, that sort of thing. So. Um, you can also catch us at you know on Twitter at Rotowire. You can catch me at Tim underscore Heaney. I do the podcast every Tuesday there for fantasy baseball with Derek Van Riper. Uh, you can you know check out every day Monday to Friday. We have postings up on that as well. Uh, you can try us free for ten days. All of our features there are our daily lineup tools, our DFS uh, programs there. It's uh, rotowire.com slash free. I'll, it's actually in the bottom of this video, I believe. Uh, and as I get as I get more creative when and more adapted the youtube tools i will definitely put more cool links that you can put in post or whatever on there on the screen and uh, don't forget to subscribe here on youtube if you guys want to get some more updates here i'm not the only one doing some good stuff here uh MM mma fans ufc fans we have uh, our i believe our preview for before every big event on the weekends we'll have one for a friday chat there uh chris list one of the you know the bright minds of the industry for all these years uh, has a weekly chat of his podcast, uh, A Real Man Would with Dalton Del Don. You can check that out here as well. That'll be a feature subscribed as well. I think it's every Thursday that drops. Uh, so you can you can get the alerts there as well. Subscribe, click on the bell, get the notifications when we go live. And again, I'm going to try to do this every Wednesday. If this time works for people, I hope I, I can you know help answer your questions here. Uh, you can check us out also on Reddit. We're going to be on actually as well. Uh, AMA, ask, ask Us Anything Tuesday afternoons i believe will be there rotating baseball staff on that uh you know another good opportunity to kind of get to know what we're looking for here and what we're seeing early on in the season a little bit so uh 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Hopefully, there'll be more people joining us after the live broadcast, which wasn't as as active as I wanted. But hopefully, we can help you know do some service for you guys, what you want us to do uh, for YouTube this year. So uh, thank you so much for joining uh, the Wire to Wire Fantasy Baseball Chat, and uh, see you next week.